is Tim, and I play music, and I do art, and I've been doing that ever since before elementary school. Uh, what I'm painting and what I try to paint is uh, I'm trying to put something positive out to people and let them realize that all the people that I paint that are on these walls um, did what they did because of this. They didn't do it to be famous. They didn't do it to um, get money and it. They just, something needed to, hap to, to happen at that point in time and they stepped up and did something and look what happened. So it's just kind of a you know, hoping you're going to turn that light bulb on on somebody that when they're seeing things. And, uh, I, a lot of times we use the quote that's a Sun Ra quote, that's uh, history is his story. Uh, Sun Ra did a lot of play on words, which was really amazing. And uh, like his orchestra was called the Orchestra, A-R-K. Um, and his whole quote is, history is his story. Uh, my story is a mystery. Uh, which is really, really great, and I've used it a lot, but for some reason people tend to think that, well, it's her story, you know, they get upset because it's his story instead of her, and it's a play on the words, and of course it's her story, it's our story, it's everybody's story, and that's why a lot of times at the end I'll put, what is your story, so anyway, that's where that comes from. Okay, we're going to start this tour with Coltrane, because you should always start with John Coltrane. And uh, his, uh, the thing that really gets me about him is the music, obviously, and also the idea that you should always try to put something positive out into the world. And if you're going to put something out, you know, make it, make it something that's positive, and, uh, because you have no idea when it's going to stick to somebody or how it's going to turn on a light bulb to somebody or plant a seed into somebody or something like that and it's just it's I mean I totally feel that way too so one of the really pretty funny stories about him is that he came to class one time with a he probably didn't really want to be teaching he probably was just there doing you know taking all the photos on the street and you know just kind of telling these stories and stuff and uh that's just me who knows but i'm just from being in the class and and he he would do uh for time magazine or newsweek he would take uh, photos of the football games and things like that like he was getting money from them i guess too for just shooting things and uh so he came to school one day and his, his leg was in a cast like a big so people are asking like well what what happened shooting pictures you know kind of thing so it's just like and then like five or six months later there was like the the teacher show i don't know what they call that but the show where all the you know in the gallery they'll have all the, the student teachers and teachers will show their work kind of deal and, and there was a picture that was gary winogrand's picture and like and i should do it to the camera because it's like the thing is so close if if, if you're looking at the picture the football is like right here kind of thing and the guy catching it is just like this kind of thing and you see that and you realize oh okay i know exactly what happened with this leg <laughs> uh, but he was pretty amazing i was on a field recording site and i was looking for this one banjo player that uh, i knew was on here and when i you know got to the thing that i was supposed to click on to get to this i hit the wrong button and she came on and when she came on like her voice was just like you know and i literally stopped everything i was doing and just kind of and sat and listened to her and then i started looking for everything i could find about her because she was just the most amazing and she was from arkansas she's, she's passed now but she's you know, she's really really great you need to listen to her she's really cool if you don't know who sunrise is yeah you really need to find out about Sun Ra, because Sun Ra was really an amazing person. Uh, he uh, basically always said that he wasn't of this world. And the reason being, not, not so much that he thought he was above everybody, it was that he just, he couldn't understand, um, you know, he grew up in the South, he couldn't, he couldn't really understand all the uh, the, you know, people hating black and white, all that stuff going on, civil rights, all that. 
he, he just he just didn't get it. He didn't understand why anybody would treat somebody else different because of color or race or religion or whatever. And so he decided that I'm not part of this. I'm I'm this over here kind of thing. So he's he's and if you're gonna listen to him to to me and once again I'm not talking for anybody else. It's just me personally. You should probably start with stuff where June Tyson sing it because it's a little bit more straight ahead, a little bit kind of thing. And at least you might, you know, once you get into that, you might start understanding more. Um, he has a really great book called uh, Bright, uh, no, um, uh, Space is the Place. And uh, he's, you know, once again, that's why the history is his story. Does he be the way he would turn phrases and words is really, really great. And I read that book one summer. Um, and I don't usually read books about musicians and stuff, but I was reading that one. And then right after it, I read the Roland Kirk book, The Bright Moments. And they're both they're kind of daunting because they're pretty freaking thick. And uh, But both books were full of that stuff where you're reading a sentence and you realize, oh, well, that's how you say that because you, you've always felt that but you just never put it into words so it was kind of an amazing summer because I both those books kind of light bulbs were going off and doors and windows inside of me were opening up and just it was it was pretty great so um, Simon Rodia did uh, built a thing called Watts Towers and uh, W A Texas accent W A T T S Watts in L A and uh, he built it all by himself. I think it's all by himself. Um, um, he might have had some help. I'm not sure, but it's really really amazing. And you should look that up. And it's kind of in the same vein as the guy that's here from Austin that did Cathedral of Junk. It's the same sort of thing where he's just decided to beautify his yard, beautify his neighborhood, but, and had this calling. And he built it not to you know, be an art form and be validated by the cool lunchroom table or anything. He just did it because he had this calling and he wanted to build this thing, which is pretty amazing to me. And, and I kind of tend to gravitate towards that sort of art and that sort of music, where it's like you know, they're doing it mainly because they have to, just like breathing, and they're not, you know, probably won't turn money down, but they're not doing it to make, a, you know, make money and stuff. So.